Welcome to Module 3. In Module 3 we will be looking at orthopaedics and in this section we will be covering root terms, some suffixes, recapping on the suffixes we've already covered and many anatomical terms associated with the body. Orthopaedic terms. This word I think we should break down so let's see how it breaks down. Ortho Peed, ick. Well, ick, we now know means relating to. Peed is a root term for child, and ortho actually means normal or straight. So when you're talking about orthopedics, you're talking about having a normal and straight child, because that's how you want to grow up. And if you're a healthy child, and when you're growing up, you should have nice straight bones and good muscles keeping you all upright. Hence the term orthopaedics. Now let's go on and look at some terms. Let's look at the skeleton. The human skeleton in an adult is made up of 206 bones. Now some of these bones are actually fused together but they're still counted as an individual bone but most of our bones are individual in their own right and all these bones are supported by ligaments, tendons, muscles and cartilage. Let's have a look at some of these bones. I'm going to start with fingers. Your fingers are called your phalanges. A single finger would be a phalanx. Your phalanges are connected to your metacarpals and your metacarpals are in turn connected to your wrist bone. your carpals. The carpals are then connected to the ulna and the radius. And then you have your elbow and there is a posh term for the elbow, it's called the olecranon. Your humerus, your funny bone, is then connected up to your scapula, which is your shoulder bone, at the back here, your shoulder bone. And your clavicle, if you can see mine, who goes to get out there? bit too much fat on me. There you go. There's my clavicle. And that in turn is connected to the sternum, your chest plate. From the sternum we then need to jump up to the skull and the medical term for skull is actually cranium and you may have possibly have heard of the term craniotomy when they make an incision into the skull. The skull is obviously connected to your, your jawbone which is your mandible and the skull is also connected to your spine. And your spine has different sections to it. So let's look at the first one. Your cervical vertebrae, which are your neck vertebrae. Your thoracic vertebrae and your lumbar vertebrae, which are the ones, if you've ever been in a car for a long time, you may get a sore back. It's usually your lumbar vertebrae, your lumbar spine, which hurts. The lumbar spine is then connected to the sacrum, still part of the spine, but these bones are actually fused together. And then in turn, that's connected to your coccyx. That is what is left of the human tail. The sacrum is connected to the pelvis and you have something called the sacroiliac joint where the sacrum and the pelvis are held together with lip by ligaments. The biggest bone, well, let's go down here to the leg, the femur your thigh bone and the thigh bone is connected to your knee bone or patella. Your shins are the tibia and fibula and these in turn are connected to your feet bones and your toes are also known as phalanges. A phalanges can be a finger or a toe. But let's also add an extra word here, malleolus. Malleolus is the term for ankle and the ankle actually consists of where the tibia and fibula join the foot. Anatomical positions. In medicine terms are used to describe different parts of the body and their location to each other. So here we have a list of some of those. So let's read through them. We have distal, 
the point furthest from the point of attachment or origin. Medial, towards the midline or the middle. Proximal, the point closest to the point of origin or attachment. So I always think it's in close proximity. Lateral is side, bilateral is both sides. And if you're having an anterior view of something, you're looking at the front. And a posterior would be the back. So a posterior view would be looking at my backside. <laughs> okay, let's have a diagram. Here we have the anterior view of the right femur. So the front view of the femur. The part at the top is known as the head and the neck of the femur, you can see on the diagram. So let's see where the distal region is. Well, it's down at the bottom from the furthest point of origin. So if the head is the beginning, the distal is down the end towards the knee. Medial would be towards the middle. Proximal femur is the top end. And here we would have a fracture of the neck of the femur, which would be in the proximal part of the femur. The abbreviation for the neck of the femur is NOF. And lateral is the side. Here we're going to look at some fractures and positions of these fractures. So we're going to use the terms we've just previously used relating to anatomical positions. So let's start off with distal. So distal, we know, means the point furthest from the point of attachment or origin. For example, we could have a distal fracture of the radius. The distal radius would be the part nearest your wrist because it starts at this end here. The point furthest from origin, the bit in the distance, is towards the wrist. So as you can see on the x-ray, a distal fracture of the radius. Next, the term medial. We mentioned the term for ankle is malleolus. Where is the medial malleolus? Well, medial meant towards the midline or the middle. So here we have a picture of the back view, the posterior view of the ankle, so you're looking at the heel. Let's see where the medial malleolus would be. Well, there's your tibia, and here, marked with the circle, is where your medial malleolus would be. So it's a knobbly bit on the inside of your foot. The next term, proximal, means the point closest to the point of origin or attachment. So our example we had previously was a fracture of the neck of the femur, which was the proximal end of the femur, towards the head. Lateral means side. So lateral malleolus ankle fracture. Let's see where it would be. Well, it's going to be on the fibula side. And you can see the crack on the bone of the picture. So that is the lateral malleolus fracture. And let's colour it in to make it a bit clearer. If you had a bimalleolus fracture, it'd mean that you'd have a fracture on both sides. Let's draw that in. So that's some examples of the positions. And these terms, distal, medial, proximal, are used in many areas of medicine, not just for the bones. Well, it's time for In Your Head. The last couple of slides, we have been looking at the anatomical positions. And you can see here we have a list, lateral, medial, anterior, proximal, distal. And I want you to place these where you think they belong. So have a look at my little diagram coming through in one moment. Here he is. It's his front view. I would like you to tell me which term means front and then furthest from origin, which term means that, which term means nearest to origin, which term means middle, and last but not least, 
which term means side. So have a little think and then I'll press my magic button and all will be revealed. Mm. Lateral is side. Medial, middle. Anterior relates to the front. And last two, proximal is the nearest to the origin and distal, think distance, is furthest from the origin. Let's take a look at the hand. Here we have a nice diagram of the hand with all the lovely bones. And to remind you that distal phalanx is the bit furthest away then your medial phalanx would be the bone in the middle and then your proximal phalanx would be the one nearest to the point of origin, so towards the metacarpals. On this diagram as well, there is actually a bone called the scaphoid bone, which I think is quite interesting. It's this one here, scaphoid. And if you look at your hand and raise your thumb, you can see a sort of gap near your wrist at the bottom of your thumb. Now that, if you poke in there, is where your scaphoid bone is. And that is also known as your anatomical snuff box. I can only assume because many years ago people would have put their snuff and <laughs> sniffed up their tobacco or whatever it is they would sniff up. And um, that's your snuff box. So your anatomical snuff box. Poke in there, that is your scaphoid bone. So potentially, if you have fractured your scaphoid bone, you would have pain in your anatomical snuff box. On this slide, we will have a couple of extra terms. So inter is a prefix. It means between. And phalang, well, we know means fingers. Or toes, as I keep reminding us. Let's have a look at some terms associated with the hands. We have the DIP joint, which stands for the distal interphalangeal joint. Let's see where that is. You can probably guess it's distal, so it's the one furthest away. Let's mark it up. The MCP joint is the metacarpophalangeal joint. It's a mouthful to say. Let's see where that one is. Now, if you think about it, it tells us where it is, metacarpo, so where the metacarpals are. So we find those on the diagram, the metacarpals. And the phalanges, so the finger bone. So it tells you it's going to be there. So your PIP joint, your proximal interphalangeal joint, will be the joint between the fingers at the proximal end, which means this one. Do have a look at that. Run the slide over again if required. And also look at your own hand. So your distal, your DIP joint, your PIP joint, and your MCP joint. It's time to look at some root terms associated with orthopaedics. So let's look at this list. Osteo means bone. Arthro is joint. Spondyl or spondylo is your vertebrae, which is your spine or backbone. Chondro is cartilage. Carp is wrist. Metatars relates to your metatarsals, which are the long bones in your feet, so they are feet bones. Phalange is your phalanges or your phalanx, which means finger and toes. And my, or myo, is muscle. So let's look at some word examples. Osteoma. Let's put the break in. Oste, break, oma. Oste we know is bone, and oma means tumour. So an osteoma is a tumour of the bone. Arthro is joint, so arthropathy, let's put our break in. 
So pathy is our ending, it's our suffix, and pathy means disease. So arthropathy means disease of the joints. Spondyl is your vertebrae, so spondylosis with its break in. Osis means condition or disorder. So spondylosis is a condition of the vertebrae or a disorder of the vertebrae. Our next term, chondra, was cartilage. Osteochondritis, we actually have two root words here. So let's put the breaks in. So oste or osteo, chondra and itis. Itis is inflammation, chondra cartilage, and oste or osteo is bone. So it's inflammation of the cartilage and bone. Carp is wrist, so carpal, let's put the break in. AL means relating to, so carpal, relating to the wrist. Metatars relates to the metatarsals, which were the long bones in the feet. So metatarsalgia, algia means pain, so metatarsalgia is pain in the feet bones. Phalang relates to phalanges or phalanx, which means finger or toes. So a phalangectomy, let's put the break in. Ectomy means removal. So a phalangectomy would be removal of a finger or toe. My or myo is muscle. Let's have a look at a word example for this one. Polymyalgia. Breaks. Poly, break, my, break, algae. So algae means pain, my means muscle, and poly means many or lots of. So this actually means pain in many muscles rather than lots of muscle pain. It's pain in many muscles. Earlier on, we looked at the skeleton and we talked about the spine. So let's talk about the spine in a bit more detail. The spine, or your vertebrae, consists of different regions. You have the neck vertebrae, the cervical vertebrae. Cervic is the root term for neck. And the root term neck applies in many different areas in the body. But in this case, we're talking about the neck under your skull. Now these bones are abbreviated with letters and numbers. So you have C1, your first cervical vertebrae, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6 and C7. So you have quite a few of them, seven. Then below the neck vertebrae, you have the chest vertebrae or the thoracic vertebrae, i.e. they are in the chest region. That's what thorax actually refers to. And in the chest region, you have 12 vertebrae. So there are 12 thoracic vertebrae. And these are abbreviated as T1, T2, and so on, all the way down to T12. Some medics will call the thoracic vertebrae by a different name, and they may be called the dorsal vertebrae. Dors is the root term for back. So your dorsal vertebrae are your back vertebrae, um, but they are exactly the same bones as the thoracic vertebrae. So the abbreviated form would be D1, D2, etc. down to D12. The lumbar vertebrae are towards the lower spine and there are five of these, L1 to L5. The sacrum is a section of fused bones at the bottom of the spine and there are five of these. And below the sacrum, you have the tail. And the tailbone, or bones, are called the coccyx. And if you've ever fallen on your coccyx, oh, it hurts. Let's look at some other terms, which aren't related to the backbone. Here's one here, ilium. Your ilium is your pelvis, or your hip. So let's have a look at the ilium and the sacrum, because they are linked together. Here on the diagram, you can see how the pelvic bone, the ilium, on each side is joined to the sacrum. 
So our bottom part of the spine is linked closely with the ilium. And this joint is known as the sacroiliac joint. Let's have a look at some examples. Our first example, cervical vertebrae. Well, if we break that down, cervical relating to the neck. Our next example, thoracic vertebrae. Let's break that down. Thoracic relating to the thorax, relating to the chest. Dorsal vertebrae. Well, these are going to be the back vertebrae. So dorsal breaks down to be dors, oh, relating to the back. The lumbar spine in the lower back is an area where many people have problems. And one thing that can happen is called a herniated disc. Between your vertebrae, you have discs of cartilage, which allow the spine to move um, and be comfortable. If you have a herniated disc, the disc is bulging out and can push against some of the spinal nerves. So a herniated lumbar disc can commonly occur between the fourth and fifth lumbar vertebrae. So if somebody has a herniated disc, then they may require an operation called a discectomy. We can break that down, it's quite obvious. Ectomy is removal of, and disc relates to disc. Below the lumbar region, we have the sacrum, those five fused bones together. And then below that is the coccyx, the tailbone. Coccydinia is the word meaning painful coccyx. So let's divide that up. Coccydinia. Dinia means pain and coccyx. Well, cocky is coccyx. Your ilium, your pelvic bone. So let's have a look at the word sacroiliac joint. Earlier we showed you the picture of the joint. A sacroiliac joint, let's break it down. Well, ac means relating to, ili relates to the, the pelvis and sacro the sacrum. So sacroiliac relates to the ilium and the sacrum. Let's look at some abbreviations. PID means prolapsed intervertebral disc. Now the term intervertebral, we can break that down. Inter means between, vertebral, relating to the vertebrae. So between the vertebrae, you have a disc. Well, we mentioned earlier, there's discs of cartilage between the vertebrae. And here's a little picture. And if you look on the diagram, you can see I've coloured in green a disc of cartilage. And on this diagram, you can see how it's bulging out and pressing against one of the spinal nerves. So this would be a prolapsed intervertebral disc. Another term for a prolapsed intervertebral disc is called a herniation of a disc. And commonly, it's called a slip disc, though that is not entirely correct. It's more a bulging disc. It's bulging out. It hasn't slipped completely out of place. It's just bulging out, and that's what's causing the pain, pushing against the nerves. When you see an abbreviation like PID L4 stroke L5 written down, what it would be referring to is a herniation of a disc, or the prolapse disc, uh, between lumbar four and lumbar five, so the fourth and fifth lumbar vertebrae. You can have a herniated disc or a prolapsed intervertebral disc anywhere along the spine where there is a disc of cartilage. So for example, you could have PID C6, C7, and that would relate to the sixth cervical vertebrae and the seventh cervical vertebrae and the disc of cartilage in between. A term we came across earlier, SI joint, the sacroiliac joint. OA relates to osteoarthritis. Now osteoarthritis is something that many people, as they get older, start getting. What it is, is wear and tear of the joints and the bone and the cartilage within the joint. Let's break down the word. Well, we know that oste or osteo means bone. 
Arthra is joint and itis is inflammation, so therefore inflammation of the joint and the bone. And we have a good diagram coming up. At the top, you can see we have a nice healthy joint. This is a type of joint known as a synovial joint, where there's fluid helping the mobility of that joint. And picture below shows a joint with osteoarthritis. And you can see how the cartilage at the end of the bones has worn away and has been left with bone spurs. So they're going to be rubbing against each other, which is going to be painful. And also all the fragments of cartilage which are floating around in the synovial fluid, not going to be a comfortable thing. So another type of arthritis is rheumatoid arthritis. And this is a condition which can affect any joints in the body and can also occur from a young age. Whereas OA, osteoarthritis, tends to be an old person's condition, rheumatoid arthritis can strike any time. It is a type of autoimmune disease when your own body is attacking itself. Rheumatoid arthritis and rheumatism is a very complex condition. General terms. We've already used a couple of these. Prolapse, meaning falling out of place. So we've had the term prolapsed intervertebral disc. And a prolapsed intervertebral disc can also be called a herniated disc because it's protruding, it's bulging out. And that's what hernia means. A hernia is a protrusion. So you will find the term prolapse and hernia used in many areas of medicine. And congenital means present at birth. And an example in orthopaedics would be congenital dysplasia of the hip, the abbreviated form being CDH. Now, what this refers to is dysplasia of the hip, which means disordered formation. Plasia is a suffix meaning formation or growth. And if you have congenital hip dysplasia or dysplasia of the hip, the ball and socket joint of the hip and the femur often is shallow or there's some problem where the joint doesn't fit properly. Sometimes the term used is developmental dysplasia of the hip, abbreviated as DDH, as problems can occur as the child grows. More suffixes and prefixes. Let's have a look at our first example. Plasia as our suffix. We had this a moment ago, meaning formation or growth. So dysplasia, we know now, means disordered formation. Our example being congenital dysplasia of the hip. Trophy, as a suffix, means nourishment or growth. So dystrophy would mean disordered nourishment. So you might have muscular dystrophy, where the muscles are weakened and waste away because of the lack of nourishment. Another term with trophy in is atrophy. A at the front of a word is no, or without, or lack of. So if you have atrophy, you have no nourishment. But that doesn't really describe what's going on. So the term atrophy actually means wasting. Because if a tissue has no nourishment, then it wastes away, shrinking. So a good way of thinking of trophy is to think about the size of the tissue. And with plasia, a good way to think about plasia is about the growth and the formation of tissues and cells. Malacia means softening. So if a person has osteomalacia, they will literally have softening of bones. And if you have softening of bones, then your bones become weak. In children, the softening of bones is known as rickets and it's due to a lack of vitamin D. Desis means fusion. So arthrodesis would be fusing a joint. And you can see here in this x-ray how this ankle joint is just pinned together in the most unbelievable way. But it works. It just seems so severe. The term arthrodesis refers to the fusion of a joint 
but it is artificial. Prefixes. Poly means many or lots of. Our word example here, polyarthralgia. So we can break this down. Poly means many or lots of. Arthra is joint and alga is pain. So what does it mean? Pain in many joints. Fibro relates to fibrous tissue or connective tissue, which includes a vast range of things from cartilage to ligaments, tendons. So you can have fibromyalgia. Fibro, the connective tissue or the fibrous tissue. My is muscle and alga is pain. Fibromyalgia therefore means pain in muscle and fibrous tissue. Let's break some words down. Our first word, arthroplasty. Arthro, break, plasty. Plasty means surgical repair, so it's repair of a joint. Next word, osteoporosis. Now I've not had this one before, but you should be able to work it out. So osteo, we know means bone. Por relates to porous. And osis is our condition or disorder. So if you read it from the back end, we have a disorder or a condition of porous bones. Chondritis. Let's break it down. Chondritis. Itis we know means inflammation of. So it's inflammation of the cartilage. Chondrectomy. Chondra break ectomy. So that will be removal of the cartilage. Thoracotomy. Thorac means chest and otomy means incision. So making a big cut into the chest, an incision into the chest. A bilateral malleolus fracture. Well, bilateral breaks down to be both sides. And I put this picture in to remind you that it's a fracture on the ankle bone. So it's a fracture on both sides of the ankle relating to the tibia and the fibula. So more break it down. Arthrography. Let's break it down. Arthro break graphy. So reading it from the back end, graphy means x-ray or recording. So it's a recording of a joint. Osteoma. Oste, break, oma. Oma means a tumour. So it's a tumour of a bone or a bone tumour. Spondylosis. Spondyl, break, osis. Osis means a condition or disorder. So here we have a condition of the vertebrae. Next one. Spondylopathy. So spondyl, we now know, means vertebrae. The O is our connecting vowel, and pathy means a disease. So spondylopathy is disease of the vertebrae. Sacroiliac. Sacroiliac. Iliac related to the pelvic bone, and sacro, the sacrum. So it's the hip and the sacrum. Distal fracture of the femur. We can't really break that down. It's still a distal fracture of the femur, but obviously I'm asking, what does distal mean? So it's a fracture at the far end of the femur, so towards the knee. And that concludes module three. Next coming up is quiz time. So this section will be finished and you turn to the menu on the left for your instructions for your quizzes.